um, watcher and welcome to said stereo and the first series on this channel designing and building a guitar I'm Alex and I've wanted to build my own guitar for years and I decided to give it a try a few months ago I'm going to film the process and share it with you so you can follow my progress, laugh at my mistakes, and hopefully enjoy watching the project come together. In this episode, I'm gonna discuss the design process of this guitar and talk a bit about the decisions that I've taken. As I'm a little bit of a dreamer, I tend to imagine ways I would improve my favorite products. And for my guitar design, I wanted to take some cues from some of my favorite guitars and dream up a design that's recognizably different, yet attractive. Reality is never as fun as dreaming though, so the very start of the design process is a bit less glamorous. The first thing is deciding upon scale length. I have pretty skinny little hands and I need all the help I can get when it comes to bending and holding notes. So for me, a short scale length of 24 inches is ideal. Next up is weight. I want the guitar to be as light as possible for me to help make it more comfortable to hold and play. So I'm going for quite a thin body of 34 millimeters, which is around one and a third inches. The body will also be hollowed out to make it even lighter. With those two basic elements decided, it's onto the more exciting stage, which is planning the shape. Offset guitars have always been my favorite kind of electric guitar. Guitars like the Fender Mustang and Jaguar. So I'm definitely gonna involve a little bit of offset style in my design. So first off, I gathered some reference images of a selection of guitars that I really liked and wanted to use as inspiration. Firstly was the double cut Gibson Melody Maker. I like this guitar as it's so small and toyish looking that it looks like it's just really fun to play. There's something really pleasing about its proportions as well. The originals now fetch silly money because they're old and they're made in the USA and although they did briefly reissue them in the noughties, they didn't reissue the double cut version, which I thought was daft and annoying. <laughs> Next is the Fender Mustang, which is one of my favorite of Fender's designs. I love the feeling the offset shape gives the guitar. I've recently cut my whole electric guitar collection down to just one, and that's a Squire Vintage Modified Mustang. And I really like it, but it's not quite perfect. Maybe I've just sat staring at it lovingly too long. Next, a guitar from a manufacturer I've not known about for very long, but I learned about it after seeing Josh Homme of Queens of the Stone Age play it. It's the Maton BB1200. I kind of think of this like a Gibson 335 if someone had extended the neck a little and squished the body and made it slightly offset. It's a little different and I really love the design. Finally, a bass guitar. I don't play bass, so I don't tend to notice many bass guitars, but I saw a picture of this and thought it was a really striking looking design. And that's the Epiphone Jack Cassidy bass. I really love the long neck, obviously, as it's a bass, and the proportions of the body, the low horn. I think it works really well. It's a really purposeful looking guitar. Um, when I first found it, I was kind of sad that there wasn't a six string guitar version. It turns out there is a six string guitar version, the Gibson Les Paul Signature from the 1970s. Only I don't think the shape translates as well as a guitar. It kind of looks bumpy and fat. So I added the bass version to my list of sources of inspiration and forgot the guitar. There were some other guitars as well, like the Tao guitar and some various old Japanese guitars, but I'll leave it there for now. So for the design, rather than draw the guitar freehand and become disappointed with my terrible drawing skills, for me, it works much better to look at a computer screen and slowly and surely get the design to a stage where I'm happy with it. After getting to grips with some vector drawing software and 20 or 30 attempts, I decided upon this design. Now I've looked at this design for so long, it's tempting to keep changing it but I'm gonna to have to stop myself here and tell myself that I'm happy with it the way it is. You can see how my influences have helped shape the design. And I do have to admit here that another guitar did creep into my thoughts a little, and that's Brian May's Red Special guitar. Whilst I've never been the biggest Queen fan or even much of a fan of his guitar, um, I have always been intrigued by the folklore surrounding it 
For example, I was always told it was made from a toilet seat. When I started reading about how Brian and his dad built the guitar, I found it a really inspiring story. They're both kind of tinkering geniuses and there wasn't a whiff of toilet seat either. In my design, I've gone for a really skinny headstock, a bit like the Gibson Melody Maker. It does mean that the headstock might be slightly weaker as it's smaller, but there are ways you can mitigate this. Also, as the guitar has a fairly short scale length, there'll be less string tension acting on the neck, which will help the headstock. I like the aesthetic of this narrow headstock with its edges square, but as I also want to keep the string pull straight over the nut, positioning the tuning keys in a way in which they don't foul on the headstock has proved interesting. My solution in the end has been to go for Steinberger gearless tuners, which I'm really looking forward to trying out. I just need to work out how to get them shipped from the US first. I'm planning for quite a chunky neck profile as well as wide. So the nut is going to be 45 millimeters wide and this will taper to 53 millimeters at the bridge. And the bridge is going to be a shallow 3D6, which I've picked for its adjustability and for the roller saddles. I've also gone for a zero fret. My first guitar and probably the only guitar I'll never sell was my dad's old uh, Eco Ranger, a six string acoustic guitar. And this features a zero fret. Zero frets tended to be used on cheaper guitars in the old days as they made the need for accurate nut slotting less of an issue, but they do have lots of benefits. Setting the right action of the nut with a zero fret is very simple, as the nut is essentially just a string guide, and the zero fret will be at the perfect height. With the zero fret and the roller saddles on the shallow bridge, I'm hoping that there'll be very little string tension, and so the tuning should be very stable on this guitar. There'll be 24 frets on the fretboard, and the zero fret will be made from stainless steel to help extend its life. There will be two humbucking pickups, and these will be mounted a little bit unconventionally from the rear of the guitar, because I wanted to do away with pickup mounting rings. There isn't a need for a neck angle with this design, as the shallow bridge is relatively shallow. However, getting the depth of the neck joint correct is probably the bit that I'm most worried about. In my drawings, I've allowed for an ideal string action, with everything in place. Whereas in my favorite reference book, which is Building Electric Guitars by Martin Koch, he describes at the planning stage to allow the strings to lie flat on the face of the fretboard with the saddles adjusted to the lowest position. Martin reasons that when you string up the guitar, the neck will inevitably bow forwards a little bit. And that, along with the adjustability of the saddles, should be enough to set the correct action. So we'll see. The headstock will be at an angle of 15 degrees, and this will be achieved with a scarf joint, which will allow me to use a fairly shallow plank of wood. In addition to this, there'll be a strengthening volute at the headstock joint. So next up, I need to decide on a few more details, like the layout of the controls and the shape of the pick guard. Then I'm gonna transfer the design to paper and start making up some wooden templates. Until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.